friends, how are you? Are you well? Thank you for having me back this year. I'm very, very grateful for your invitation. First things first, Mr. Lighting Man, can we have the lights up on the audience so I can see they're beautiful? Ah, look at them. <laughs> beautiful people. So, um, my time is limited, so I'm going to kick straight in, but I'm going to start with a, something that someone said to me a long time ago about stories and their function. She said that stories are like a bitter pill. The lesson that we have to learn about life is contained in this bitter pill, but the twists and turns of the story, the diversions, is the sugar coating around that bitter pill so that we can swallow the lesson easily. So with that in mind, I'm going to tell you my first story. If you want to hear my story, yeah. when I say crick, you say? Yeah. The people at the front, I can hear you. The people at the back, sit up. Crick. Yeah. Crick. Yeah. Crick. Yeah. Once upon a time, there was an old lady. She lived deep in the forests on the beautiful island of Martinique in the Caribbean Sea. When she was young, she was so strong, she could stand waist high in the water and she could catch those flashing fish with her bare hands. When she was young, she was so strong that she could climb into the arms of the mango tree and pick and pick and pick as many mangoes as she could carry. Though she would throw down to her husband or she would throw down to her son. When she was young, she and her husband would sit by the banks of the river, looking deep into each other's eyes, sending each other the message of... No. You know me already. There's no such thing as love. There is only love. They would look into each other's eyes, sending each other the message of... Are you feeling it? <laughs> but now she was old. Her husband had died a long time ago. Her son and her grandchildren, they never came to visit. Her hands were weak. She could no longer catch those flashing fish. She could no longer climb that mango tree. She could no longer tend her kitchen garden. And so she was confined to eating one thing and one thing only, wild watercress. So she had watercress soup, she had watercress pie, she had watercress salad, she had watercress shake, she had watercress, 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 watercress. She was up to here with watercress. It had been so long since she sucked on a juicy chicken bone. It was so long since she sat across the table from another human being and shared the delicious aromas of a meal, watercress. That was it. One day, that woman was sitting by the banks of the river and she was reminiscing. She was thinking about the time she and her husband would sit there together. She had tears in her eyes when she wondered why her son never came to visit. And as she was sitting there, she became aware of a movement in the undergrowth. She stood up, and she saw there a bird, a beautiful bird, a bird she'd never seen before. She didn't know its name, she didn't know what to call it, but the bird, its feathers, from the tip of top of its head down to its tail, were blue. And then its wings were pink. And the bird obviously had a broken wing. And as she looked at that bird, it reminded her of a song she used to sing to her son. There stands a bluebird, tra-la-la-la. There stands a bluebird, tra-la-la-la. Give me sugar, coffee and tea. Give me sugar, coffee and tea. Now you know me, and you know I don't sing on my own. <laughs> so I'm going to teach you the song. There stands a bluebird, tra-la-la-la. There stands a bluebird. Give me sugar, coffee and tea. There stands a bluebird. There stands a bluebird. Give me sugar, coffee, and tea. Give me sugar, coffee, and tea. 
Now show me a motion, tra la la la. Show me a motion. Give me sugar, coffee, and tea. Give me sugar, coffee, and tea. Now dance around the ocean. Dance around the ocean. Give me sugar, coffee, and tea. Give me sugar, coffee, and tea. And as she remembered that song, she remembered how much her son loved nature and loved birds. And so she lovingly bent down and she picked up that bird and she stroked it. And she could feel its heart fluttering. But as she stroked the bird, it became calm. She said, I'm going to take you home. I'm going to take care of you. She took that bird home. She put it on her bed. At night, she would sleep with the bird clutched to her breast. She would stroke its head. There stands a bluebird, tra la la la. There stands a bluebird. Give me sugar, coffee, and tea. One day passed, two days passed, three days passed, and every day she would rub oils on the bird's broken wing. Every day she would share some of her watercress with the bird. Every day the bird got stronger and stronger until finally the bird could flap its wings. Till finally the bird could fly around her house. The bird would perch on her shoulder, on her finger, on her head. She was so happy to have that company, but... She knew that this bird was not for keeping. This was a wild creature. And even though it broke her heart, she knew that when the bird was strong enough, she would have to release it. And so one day, the bird perched on her finger. She left her house. She went outside. She walked back to the banks of that river. She stroked its head. Goodbye, my friend, she said. I wish you could stay. But I'm sure you have a family somewhere. Goodbye, and safe travels. And she let the bird go. The bird took to the air, circled three times, and disappeared into the clouds. And the old woman, she was alone once more. And she would sit there by the banks of the river. And she would scan the sky. Perhaps a friend would come to see her this day. One day passed, two days passed, Three days passed, and on the fourth day, as the old woman sat there by the banks of the river, who did she see circling above her head but her friend, the bird? She said, hello, my friend. How glad I am to see you. And the bird was carrying something in its beak. The bird opened its beak, and this thing fell to the ground. The woman picked that thing up. It was a pumpkin seed. A pumpkin seed, she said. I can plant this pumpkin seed. I can grow pumpkins. That means I can eat something other than watercress. She was so excited. She took the pumpkin seed home. She planted it outside her house. Every day she lovingly watered the pumpkin seed. Every day she spoke to the pumpkin seed. She encouraged the pumpkin to grow. And little by little, first a green shoot and then another and then long, curling trails as the pumpkin grew bigger and bigger and bigger. It was so big. And when that fruit was ripe, the old woman's mouth began to water when she thought of all the different things she could make with that pumpkin that was not watercress. She went into her house, she brought the knife, and very gently she cut that pumpkin away from its stalk. And she took it into the house, she put it on the table, and she imagined roasted pumpkin, boiled pumpkin, fried pumpkin, pumpkin risotto. <laughs> she took a knife and she began to cut the pumpkin in half. And to her surprise, instead of the pumpkin being filled with pumpkin seeds and pumpkin flesh, it was filled with beautifully cooked food. What do you think was in the pumpkin? Chicken was in the pumpkin. What else was in the pumpkin? Beef was in the pumpkin. What else was in the pumpkin? Steak was in the pumpkin. What else was in the pumpkin? Fish was in the pumpkin. Anything you can imagine tasting was in that pumpkin. And the old woman, she ate and she ate and she ate and she ate and she... Oh. Ah. The old woman had a neighbor. 
She wasn't a friendly neighbor. She wasn't the kind of neighbor you wanted to stand with at your gate and have conversations with. She was a nosy neighbor. She was always getting involved in other people's business. And she was always reminding the old woman that her son never came to visit. Oh, my son came to see me today. Your son didn't come. Oh, dear. <laughs> never mind. My son sent me a parcel. Oh, your son didn't send you a parcel. Oh, dear. Never mind. My grandchildren came. Oh, you haven't seen your grandchildren for how long? Oh, well. Never mind. And even though the neighbor was annoying, the old woman knew there was too much food in the pumpkin for just herself. So she said, well, I have one neighbor and one neighbor only. I will share the contents of my pumpkin with my neighbor. And so she took that pumpkin. She walked through the forest till she came to her neighbor's house. She told her neighbor everything that had happened. And the neighbor said, oh, really? Mm, you're so kind. Thank you. And she ate and she ate and she ate. And every day when the old woman woke up, there was a new pumpkin. And every day she would cut that pumpkin. She would eat half and she would take the other half to her neighbor. But... As my mother used to say, some people have bad minds, and the neighbor was no different. And she began to think to herself, why should I share her leftovers? I want my own pumpkin. I deserve my own pumpkin. So she decided to go and find a blue bird. She walked down to the water's edge. She scoured the shoreline for the bird. She looked in trees, in bushes. She couldn't find the bird, and then one day, she heard a flapping of wings, and there was that blue bird pecking at the earth, pulling out worms, perfectly healthy, both its wings intact. That neighbor took a stick. You know what she did. With one, the wing was broken. She snatched up that bird, she took it home, she threw it in the corner of her house, Every day, she would throw scraps at the bird. She didn't sing to it. She didn't massage it with oil. She didn't care for it and love it. And after three days, even though the bird's wing wasn't fully healed, she took that bird and she threw it up into the air. She said, bring me a pumpkin seed and make it quick. And every day, she went out and she scoured the sky, looking for the bird. Stupid creature, where is it? I want my pumpkin seed. After three days, she saw it circling above her head. It was listing to one side because its wing hadn't healed properly. And in its beak, it had a pumpkin seed. And it dropped the pumpkin seed. About time, said the old woman. About time. She picked up that pumpkin seed and she went to her house. And she planted it outside her house. And every morning, when she made yellow water, if you know what I mean, <laughs> she would pour the content of her pea pot onto the plant. But despite her lack of care, it began to grow. One green shoot, and then another, and then another, and then curling, twirling tendrils as that pumpkin spread itself out. And the pumpkin grew bigger, and bigger, it was three times as big as the other woman's pumpkin. Hey, hey, she said, this is my pumpkin. And that old woman isn't getting anything. And she didn't take a knife and gently cut it from its stalk. She ripped that pumpkin away from its stalk. She took it into the house. She took a chopper and slack, she cut it in half. It fell in two halves. And out of that pumpkin came spiders, scorpions, Lizards, fleas, ticks, mosquitoes, bzzz, and they began to crawl off the table and up her body. And she, she tried to brush them off, but the more she tried to brush them off, the more they swarmed over her body. And that woman had no choice but to run from that house. She ran, she ran away from her house. She ran, she ran through the forest. She ran, she ran to the river. She jumped into the river and she swam to a land where hopefully they never, ever grew pumpkins. As for our friend, the old lady, she ate whatever the pumpkin provided. And what she couldn't finish today, she finished tomorrow. And every day, she would remember her friend and she would sing, 
There stands a bluebird, tra la la la. There stands a bluebird. Give me sugar, coffee, and tea. Give me sugar, coffee, and tea. Now show me a motion. By the way, why am I the only one doing a motion? <laughs> now show me a motion, tra la la la. Show me a motion, tra la la la. Give me sugar, coffee, and tea. Give me sugar, coffee, and tea. Now dance around the ocean, tra la la la. Dance around the ocean, tra la la la. Give me sugar, coffee, and tea. 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 And that is the end of the first show. Thank you. So now. I've used my time wisely, which means I have time to give you another story. Is that okay? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. You sound doubtful. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay then, may I have this chair please? Mr. Ahmet. Eren, Eren, can you do me a favor? There's a chair over there that I'd really like you to bring to me. Thank you, Eren. Remember Eren from last year? I think you should remind yourselves of how good he was. And his uh, pantalon action was very good. <laughs> thank you, Eren. Thank you. You're a good boy. So, this uh, story requires some percussion, um, which I don't have. So, I'm going to use my, my womanly legs. <laughs> Let's call them womanly legs. Okay, can you hear this? Can you hear that? You sure? At the back, can you hear that? Now, if you can keep this rhythm, you can play with me. But if you can't keep this rhythm, don't, okay? In England, I always have to say, no, let, let me do it. Because they just can't keep time. No disrespect, no disrespect, no disrespect, no disrespect, no disrespect. But they can't keep, no disrespect, no disrespect. But they can't keep time, generally speaking. So I'm going to, actually, I'm going to slow it down a bit. So, if you want to hear my story, when I say crick, you say crack. But we're going to do it on the beat, okay? Crick, crack. 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 Crick, crack. Crack. Crick, crack. Crick, crack. Once upon a time, there was an old Jamaican lady. She lived in a cold, cold country. One morning, she woke up, she opened the curtains, she looked outside, and she saw snow everywhere. She said, Brrr, woo, it calls her. I'm going to make myself some cornmeal porridge. You call it polenta, we call it cornmeal. I'm going to make myself some cornmeal porridge. So, she went downstairs to her kitchen. She took a pot. She filled it with water. She added cornmeal, cinnamon, vanilla, sugar, condensed milk. She stirred and she stirred. It boiled and it boiled. She stirred and she stirred. It boiled and it boiled. And when it was quite ready, she took the pot off the stove. She went to the cupboard to get a bowl. But when she turned back, the porridge and the pot were gone. She looked up. She looked down. She looked right. She looked left. And sitting in the doorway was her cat, which had once been very, very thin and was now very, very fat. She said to the cat, hey, little cat, why are you so fat? I'll tell you why I'm so fat. <laughs> I've eaten the porridge, the whole pot too, and now I'll eat you. Um! Ate that sweet old lady and got a little plumper too. And then it went for a walk and its paws went pad, pad, 
pad, pad. What did they say? Pad, pad. On and on she walked until she came to a short, fat man. We're going to call him Short, Fat and Squat. Short, Fat and Squat looked at that cat and said, Hey, little cat, why are you so fat? I'll tell you why I'm so fat. I've eaten the porridge, the whole pot too. The dear old lady, and now I'll eat you. Rum! Ate that short, fat man and got even fatter too. And its paws went pad, 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 pad. What did they say? On and on that cat went until it came to a man who was so drunk that he teetered this way, and he teetered that way, and he teetered this way, and he teetered that way. We're going to call him Shoulders Drink a Lot. Shoulders Drink a Lot said, Hey, little cat, why are you so fat? I'll tell you why I'm so fat. I've eaten the porridge, the whole pot too. The dear old lady, short, fat, and squat. Now I'll eat you. Um, ate that short, fat man, that drunken man, and got a little tipsy too. We're going to take the pace up, and its paws went pad, 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 pad. And on it walked until it came to a woman very posh woman, wearing a fur coat. And she said, hey, little cat, why are you so fat? I'll tell you I am so fat. I've eaten the porridge, the whole pot too. The dear old lady, short, fat and squat, short as drink a lot, now I'll eat you. Rum! Ate that woman and her fur coat and <coughs> got a fur ball too. <laughs> and his paws went pad, 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 pad. What did they do? On and on that cat walked until it came to five flying birds. They said, hey, little cat, why are you so fat? I'll tell you why I'm so fat. I've eaten the porridge, the whole pot too. The dear old lady, short, fat and squat, short as drink a lot, a lady in furs, now I'll eat you. Um, 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 um. And they were delicious too. And his paws went pad, 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 pad. I can't hear you. On and on that cat walked until it came to seven dancing girls. And they said, hey, little cat, why are you so fat? I'll tell you why I'm so fat. I've eaten the porridge, the whole pot too. The dear old lady, short, fat and squat, short as drink a lot. A lady in furs, five flying birds. Now I'll eat you. Um, 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 um. And not only did they look delicious, they tasted delicious too. And their paws went pad, 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 pad. What did they do? On and on that fat cat walked until it came to a very good girl. She must have gone to Ilas College because she was sitting there and she was reading a book. And she looked up at that fat cat and she said, Hey, little cat, why are you so fat? I'll tell you why I'm so fat. I've eaten the porridge, the whole pot too. The dear old lady, short, fat as pot, short as drink a lot. A lady in furs, five flying birds, seven dancing girls. Now I'll eat you. Um, at the girl and the book and became very clever too. <laughs> and its paws went pad, 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 pad. What did they do? <laughs> on and on that cat walked until it came to a bishop wearing his mitre, carrying his crook, and he said, hey, little cat, why are you so fat? I'll tell you why I'm so fat. I've eaten the porridge, the whole pot too. The dear old lady, short, fat and squat, short as drink a lot, a lady in furs, five flying birds, seven dancing girls, a girl with a book, now I'll eat you. Hum! At the bishop and his crook, and became very holy too. <laughs> and his paws went pad, 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 pad. What did they do? In the distance, in the forest, a woodsman. Chop, 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 chop. What was it? Chop, 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 chop. 
The cat was interested. Swish, 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 swish through the dry grass. Swish, 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 swish through the dry leaves. Swish, 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 swish. The woodsman looked at that fat cat and said, Hey, little cat, why are you so fat? I'll tell you why I'm so fat. I've eaten the porridge, the whole pot too. The dear old lady, short, fat and squat, short as drink a lot, a lady in furs, five flying birds, seven dancing girls, a girl with a book, a bishop with a crook, and now I'll eat you. No, said the woodsman. You can't eat me. I'm chopping firewood to take home to my family. This cannot be. But the cat was very greedy, and he opened his big mouth, and he leapt towards the woodsman. And I'm sorry to anyone who owns a cat, the woodsman took his axe, he swung it high up in the air, and he went, are you ready? Chop, 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 chop. I don't believe you. Chop, 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 chop. That cat fell in two halves, and out of the cat came, backwards, the bishop with the crook, the girl with the book, the seven dancing girls, five flying birds, lady in furs, short to drink a lot, short, fat and squat, the dear old lady, the porridge and the pot. And the old lady said, oh, that's what happened to my cornmeal porridge. She said, would you like to come home with me and have a nice traditional Jamaican breakfast? And they said, oh, yes, please. So she took them all to her house and she put the pot back on the stove. And she stirred and she stirred and it boiled and it boiled and she spoke to her guest. Hurrah, 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 hurrah. And she stirred and she stirred and it boiled and it boiled and she spoke to her guest. Hurrah, 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 hurrah. And when it was quite ready, she turned around to take the pot off the stove and the porridge and the pot were gone. She looked up, she looked down, she looked right, she looked left, and who was sitting in the doorway? The cat. She said, hey, little cat, why are you so fat? I'll tell you why I'm so fat. And you know what? If this story begins again, it will never end. <laughs> and that is the end of my story. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, so now you have it. Stories are a bitter pill encased in sugar coating, twists, turns, diversions, so that we can swallow the lesson. But also, they can just be for fun. So have fun with these stories. Tell them they're yours now. Thank you very much. Thank you.